We're here in the wild of the County Baden. What we see here is a student in his natural habitat. He's just minding his own business. But what he doesn't know is he's in the presence of one of the world's deadliest creatures. To fully understand what just happened, we need a word with our doctor. Doctor, explain to us what happened. From what I can see, he was bitten by a black mamba. Black mammas are venomous snakes. They occur only to parts of the Sub-Saharan Africa and unfortunately also in the area of the County Baden. Major mambas are generally between 2 and 3 meters long. The venom is produced by modified saliva glands and is injected into the victim by biting. The deadly venom is composed of different toxins. Dendrotoxin is an important component of the venom. So, doctor, as we can see, uh, he's, so, he's in total shock, has difficulty breathing, seems to suffer from excessive salvation and severe abdominal pain. How can you explain these symptoms? Hmm. I think it's related to the dendrotoxin. The dendrotoxin is a neurotoxin. Dendrotoxin disturbs only the functioning of motor neurons. Motor neurons are responsible for the transmission of signals to an actuator for example, a muscle or a gland. Unlike most other toxins and drugs, dendrotoxin doesn't affect directly the transmission of the signal from one neuron to another over the synaptic leg, but it acts already at the axon. To understand how and where the dendrotoxin affects the signal transmission, we have to look first at the normal functioning of an axon. Small cells surround the axon to insulate it and allow a fast and energy efficient transmission. The gaps between the small cells are called nodes of Ranvier. Let us look closer to these nodes of Ranvier. Here the axon can be accessed from the outside. In the cell membrane we have different proteins. The sodium potassium pump to create and maintain the resting potential. Furthermore, we have the voltage-gated potassium channels and the voltage-gated sodium channels. When the action potential arrives, the voltage-gated sodium channels op open and the sodium ions rush in through the diffusion forces because we have a higher concentration on the outside than on the inside. As a consequence, the potassium channels open and the potassium ions, which are on the inside, rush out because of diffusion forces, because we have inside a higher concentration outside and because the big positive charge on the inside. Some of the ions continue in the axons through the diffusion forces, forces and trigger this process again at the next node of Ranvier. Dendrotoxin binds the voltage-gated potassium channels at the node of Ranvier and prevents the potassium ions to rush out. Since the potassium ions can't go out, the resting potential can't be restored. This leads to a prolongation of the action pot potential. As a consequence of this prolongation, we have an increase of acetylchlorine release at the neuromuscular junction. The result are higher stimulation of the glands or a spasmic contraction of the muscles. The victim often suffocates because the diaphragm and the intercostal muscle don't work correctly. To help the victim, we can theoretically give him a toxin with the opposite effect like atropine or botox, which inhibit the signal. They act here at the synaptic left. The better method is to inject an antivenom. The antivenom contains antibodies, which inactivates the venom.
Mm, I think I have such an anti venom for the black mamba. Wait, buddy. The doctor gave me this. I'm gonna come and help you. One eternity later. Doctor, it's. Doctor! Hello, yes. Doctor. It's been many wee years. Have you heard from our victim? Hmm. Ah, now I remember. Actually, he died because someone was so smart to stick the needle of the antivenom into the lamb that caused the pneumothorax. As a consequence, he suffocated. Hmm.